The valley lay dry that winter, and wind roared over the mountains. February 2015 marked the fourth year of bad drought in California, the worst in more than a millennium, and the jet stream raced over the Sierra Nevada range and hit the floor of Owens Valley, as it usually does a few times a month in winter. But on the afternoon of Friday, February 6th, the wind moved with enough force to strain the wires draped between the old mountain poles that stretch along the base of the mountains. Maybe these wires swung like heavy jump ropes. Maybe the wind knocked a branch across a weak point. Regardless, just before 2 p.m., a wire broke and sparks trailed through the dry brush there on the floor of the valley, 14 miles from the little hospital where I was born. Owens Valley is part of the region we call the Eastern Sierra, or the East Side. This valley is high desert, a long brown sliver of sagebrush and bitterbrush cupped between ranges. To the west, the stark granite escarpment of the Sierra Nevada, casting its rain shadow across our towns. To the east, the whites and inyos, those ancient desert mountains, rippled and purple, rising two vertical miles over 14,000 feet at the highest peak. Fire, drought, flood, and blizzard visit the eastern Sierra often. Perhaps this is why the nearest place with a population over 30,000 is 200 miles away. Just northwest of Owens Valley, here on the east side, Mammoth Mountain spits steam and rumbles with a belly full of magma. The wind knocks big rig trucks over regularly. In our living room, a scorpion once stung Mom's toe, and black widow spiders lived in the wooden frame of our old hot tub. Our neighbors' dogs died from the bites of rattlesnakes, and their cats died in the mouths of coyotes and mountain lions. Our neighbors themselves fell from cliff faces and froze in immense immovable snow. Some crashed airplanes into mountains during storms. Others lost themselves in the desert without water. Annual rainfall in the Owens Valley town of Bishop averages five inches and in drought years measures closer to zero. And so the brush that covers the valley is always dry. And that February, it was drier still. Usually snow lies over the mountains. But lately the days had been eerily warm, and snowpack was at a record low. My gardener grandfather on the central coast of California fretted about his yellow pasture. In Bishop, my father, jack of all trades with hands like leather, split fingertips wrapped in duct tape, wrinkles on his cheeks like scars, told me that even in February he was working outdoors in a T-shirt beneath the sky-pricking point of Mount Tom and the long gray line of Wheeler Crest. My father saw the fire when it was still small. He drove north from Bishop toward the stone wall of the mountains, toward our old neighborhood, Swall Meadows. He did not drive to investigate the fire, but to do some work on the place, to split some kindling he'd harvested on the side of Wheeler Crest. As he drove, he saw smoke rising and had to detour around a cottonwood the wind had knocked across the road. The wind blew a steady fifty miles per hour with stronger gusts, shifting directions, throwing dust, whipping brush. At that time, the fire had just been called in, and a crew of volunteer firefighters swarmed around it. A small brush burn, my father thought, and continued up the mountain. On that February afternoon, I didn't yet know how the ground becomes naked where fire passes over how tree trunks cake in their own blackened bark and clumps of boulders lie bare and singed in the sand. Though I was halfway across the country, a graduate student in snow-crusted Minnesota, from my father's telling, I could imagine what he saw. After all, I am always thinking of home. <laughs>